From WRL News and the Capital Broadcasting Podcast Network, this is your coronavirus North Carolina news brief for Friday, May 1st, 2020. I'm Cliff Bumgardner. Here's the latest from WRL.com. State officials will start releasing coronavirus infection numbers by zip code today, except for areas with fewer than 500 residents and fewer than five cases. Today, Dr. Mandy Cohen, secretary of the State Department of Health and Human Services, said, quote, many of us here in North Carolina very much identify with the county we live in, which is why we shared the information by county. It's how our local health departments do their work. Cohen urged people to continue abiding by the statewide stay-at-home order so that trends in infections, hospitalizations, and deaths will stabilize and possibly decline over the next week, allowing restrictions to ease when Governor Roy Cooper's order expires on May 8th. She noted that about 35% of adults under the age of 65 statewide have an underlying health condition that puts them at higher risk for COVID-19. It may be fall before North Carolina's court system returns to normal operations. That's according to State Supreme Court Chief Justice Sherry Beasley, who wrote a letter to judges this week about the court's status amid the ongoing pandemic. A number of routine court operations are on hold, and they have been since March to cut down on foot traffic and large gatherings in courthouses around the state. Yesterday, Beasley named a task force to plan for some sort of reopening, but her memo cautioned judges that it's going to take a while saying, quote, it is clear that we will not be in a position to resume normal functioning of our court system for at least several months and possibly into the fall. However, we also know that we cannot continue indefinitely with so many of our court functions frozen in time. We must begin to plan to provide a greater level of service to the public while still protecting the health and safety of all who work in and visit our county courthouses. The task force is made up of various judges, attorneys, and court administrators from around the state. Superior Court Judge Don Bridges and District Court Judge Jay Corpening will chair it. Among other things, they'll plan for the avalanche of filings expected as operations ramp back up. Beasley told judges in her letter that she knows they're anxious to plan court sessions for June, but that it's not realistic to expect jury trials. Emergency and time-sensitive hearings are still being heard in state courts, at times via video conference. Beasley delayed routine operations in March, then re-upped that in early April, putting them off until at least June 1st. Tomorrow, the Durham Farmer's Market will open with new safety guidelines. Face masks will be required, and social distancing measures will be in place. Customers will also be asked to walk one direction through the market, and hand-washing stations will be set up at the entrance and exit. The market runs from 8 a.m. to noon at Durham Central Park. It's getting easier to get tested for coronavirus without going to the doctor. Today, a previously closed Walgreens location in Durham began offering free COVID-19 tests to people who meet CDC guidelines. People have to make an appointment online and complete a screening, which will only take a few minutes, before they can get approval to be tested. If someone is eligible for a test, they are asked to stay inside their cars when they arrive at the testing site. The testing site is a drive-through style, with pharmacists standing by to help people do their own self-test with a nasal swab. Walgreens will share the results of the test with the public health officials, and the patient will learn results in 24 hours. In collaboration with federal health agencies and local and state authorities, Walgreens is currently providing COVID-19 testing in 49 states and Puerto Rico. And lastly, technology companies are providing insight on social distancing trends in North Carolina, and the results show people are starting to move again. Apple has been tracking people's movements based on route requests. It turns out the North Carolinians were practicing social distancing in March, but started slipping by the end of April. The tracking shows a big drop in so-called mobility in March, but by the end of April, the line starts going back up, indicating fewer people are abiding by social distancing and stay-at-home guidelines. Movement tracking reports from the University of Maryland and the Ducardi Labs show a similar trend. This has been your Coronavirus North Carolina News Brief for Friday, May 1st, 2020. As always, if you like the information and resources you get from this show, let us know by leaving a rating and review on whatever podcast app you use. Plus, while you're there, subscribe to the show so you don't miss our daily updates. Thanks for listening.